Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. That's the Zarda Playbook, Emery Hunt, and I'm Tyler Merkovich, and we're bringing you an FCS preview on the Ohio Valley Conference. And let's start out with Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks, led by Jack Crow, 8-3 last year. Expectations are back, and expectations will be high on former LSU quarterback Ryan Perilu, over 2,300 yards through the air, 19 touchdowns passing. He added seven rushing. This guy could scramble, at, but he needs to make plays in the passing game. Yeah, he's one good player. He's a really good football player in Ryan Perilu. He has turned his life around, got the off-the-field issues out of the way. One thing that he has to improve on, 13 interceptions, cut that down, increase the touchdown total. The passing game is going to be okay. I like Ryan Perilu, uh, strong arm, mobile within the pocket, and he does make good decisions with the football. They also have a good running back in Brandon George is going to help out that passing game as well, too, because he's a versatile guy. He can catch balls out of the backfield, but that's going to help out uh, the team as a whole because they do have a veteran offensive line coming back. Keep an eye on wide receiver James Wilkerson that's going to help out the guy, guys on the flanks. Freshman Greg Smith, also another receiver, needs to help with the departure of Maurice Dupree, their leading receiver last year. Kurt Porter, left tackle, plus three offensive linemen return. This is why there's high expectations for the Cox. It's going to be spread across the line from, you know, tackle to tackle. There's going to be a lot of depth, a lot of leadership. So that's what's going to help out that, you know, the running game as well as the, the passing game. George over six yards per carry, but defense, they go with unorthodox 3-4 in the FCS. Alex Henderson, 103 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss. That was good enough for a first-team selection. And Carnell Clark, their strong safety, and also another first-team selection, three tackles for loss and two interceptions. They have a lot of good players on that defense. You want to look at the uh, that 3-4, you... you up front, you have to have three really good linemen that can keep those, that could command a double team. And they do have two good defensive ends, two good uh, D linemen. You look at uh, Brant Thomas and Jameson Wembley, uh, Wadley, I'm sorry. Uh, those guys can hold their own up front. Also, secondary will be another strength. You look at cornerback TJ Heath, seven interceptions last season, seven pass breakups. Look at AJ Davis, he also had three interceptions last season. So the secondary is fine. The linebackers you mentioned, Alexander Henderson, a really good player, over 100 tackles. Phenomenal athlete, so I like the defensive side of the ball for Jacksonville State. That's going to help those guys a lot, especially those first two games at Georgia Tech and at Florida State. Very interesting out of conference schedule. Let's move over to the Panthers of Eastern Illinois, led by Bob Spoo, five and seven last year. Thirteen returning starters. Bodie Reader will battle retro freshman Doug Reynolds. And an FBS transfer also coming. So the quarterback position is up in the air. But Florida transfer running back Siobhan Walker and Mon Williams and Desmond Ward had 11 touchdowns last year. The backs are there for the Panthers. Well, Bodie Reader, if he wins the job, he's going to have the luxury of having those running backs back there. As well as a veteran offensive line with a lot of depth. They have a lot of depth on their offensive line that's going to help out whoever's going to be the starter. So you're going to see consistency within the running game as well as within the uh, pass blocking because all those guys up front can't play football. I like that offensive line at Eastern Illinois. One thing, Charles Graves, the wide receiver, he's the only guy that's out there. Everyone else is a question mark. So they have question marks at quarterback. They have question marks at receiver. So those two things, you're, you're, two, you're two out of four on offense. You have a good offensive line, good running back. Quarterback and receiver have to step up and make themselves known. And experience in those two positions, right guard Chaz Millard, first team, all conference, leads the hog mollies up front. Defensive side of the ball, they lose an All-American on the defensive line in Pierre Walters, but they bring in an Illinois transfer at the same position in D'Angelo McCray, who needs to step up. Cornerback Rashad Haynes had four interceptions, and free safety Seymour Lofton, 72 tackles and three interceptions. Rashad Haynes is a guy that is going to shoot up a lot of draft boards. He is an outstanding cornerback. He can tackle. He can. He he had his read and recognition skills are on point. I like him as a cornerback prospect. He's going to be a real good player in that secondary. The defensive line is going to take a hit this season. They lost a lot of key players. You look at the linebacking core. That's the strength of that team. Cody Lehman is going to is the leader of that group. So the defensive line has to improve in order for those guys to be successful successful on defense. Don't underestimate the cornerbacks in the OVC. As a couple of years ago, we had Dominique Rogers-Cromarty come out. He's already making a big name for himself in exactly. the NFL. 
Let's move over to the University of Tennessee Martin Skyhawks. Jason Simpson was 8 and 4 in his third year last year. He's entering his fourth year now. Only nine returning starters, which is interesting. But first team quarterback all conference, Kate Thompson is back, and second team all conference running back, Braden Young, almost five yards per carry and 12 touchdowns are back for the Skyhawks. Well, they're going to ha have to hope that offensive line gets it together because they they're good at the tackle, but Everwells has to have some holes. They have to gel pretty quick in order to keep that consistency. I do like uh, Thompson as a quarterback, really good player. He's a phenomenal athlete. Can also sling it all the way around the stadium. So he has a real good arm. And you look at the running back, uh, Brandon Young, 700 yards rushing, approximately 12 touchdowns. Phenomenal running back. All conference left tackle, Rodney Irvin, awesome. And right tackle, Joe Gibbs also. But as you said, their interior offensive line needs to get it together. They need to play as a unit. If you have one good guy in the offensive line, it's not going to do well. All five need to be playing and cohesively. I, I, I like the fact that uh, you look at the receiver, uh, Hicks. 12 touchdown catches, 900 yards receiving. So they have talent at quarterback, one running back, and wide receiver. Offensive line is the question mark. Well, they have an overhaul on the defensive line. Six of their 17 signees were on that for that position. But linebacker Josh Bay is back, second team, all conference, 88 tackles, three sacks, 13 and a half tackles for loss. And in the secondary, their only returning starter is Marque Guy. But they bring in a Duke transfer named Eddie Morgan. So cornerback and D-line, this defense a little shaky. Right, the defensive line is the weakest unit on that team. They need more production across the board. Uh, you know, you mentioned linebacker Josh Bay. Brent Aker is another good linebacker for those guys. Um, but across the board, the production has to increase to catch up to the offense. So there's a lot of holes on defense. If you don't have any uh, success on that defensive line, then everything else behind it is useless. The Eastern Kentucky Colonels, M, spell Colonels for me. Never mind, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> anyway, Dean Hood is in his second year. He was 8-4 and four last year, which is respectable for a first-year coach. 12 returning starters. Retro freshman T.J. Pryor won the job in the spring, supposedly. Running back C.J. Walker is their tailback. Well, you look at C.J. Walker, 700 yards rushing, 7 touchdowns. And that quarterback, T.J. Pryor, Supposed to be special. I can't wait to see him play. To as a redshirt freshman to come in and win a job like that, that says a lot for that young man. He's going to be a tremendous player for the Colonels uh, this season. You look at o the O line. Derek Hartman is a standout of that group, but they also need some help on that offensive line. I do like the receivers, Shannon Davis, uh, Cody Watts. They're going to have to play a bigger role. They're going to have to step up and make some plays out there on the flank. So we need the receivers to step up out there in Eastern Kentucky. Well, they return their top tackler in Jordan Dalrymple, their linebacker, but they lose first-team all-conference defensive end Chris Coy. But they're going to bring in a guy from West Virginia, Uriah Grant. If this guy's good enough to play on the FBS level, he sure is good enough to play on the FCS level, so maybe he can take over Chris Coy's spot. But they lose a couple safeties, but they return corners in Jeremy Caldwell and Andre Evans. They combined for five picks last year. Hey, if you combine for five picks, you get your hands on a lot of football. It's a lot of interceptions. That's wins for the defensive side of uh, the ball. Uh, they can't allow the big play. That's what played Eastern Kentucky last season. Gave up too many big plays in the passing game and in the running game. Overall, they have to improve that. I do like uh, Chris Hall, the defensive end. Six sacks last season. He's going to have to carry that unit. Uh, the linebackers are okay, but they need more production. They have to come up and... Uh, Make some plays. Antonio Frederick, a guy I like. He's going to be a real good player for those for the current.